Welcome to the Female VC Lab podcast. I have Nicole here. Thank you again, Milken, for your 2024 Global Conference. But I have Nicole here. And we have Barbara here. One line. Give me your name, your title, Barbara. and your area of impact, Nicole. Barbara, I'm Nicole Valentine. I am the FinTech Director at the Milken Institute. It's such a pleasure to be seated with you again. Yes. We're, we're back at this. We're back again. So our later bonus question will have some different impact this time. Yes, yes. All right. What inspired you to get into, I know you do a lot in the financial inclusion area. I know you do a lot in educating people on finance. So what inspired you to get into that area of expertise and how does one go about doing that? Inspiration. Okay, first of all, I'm in Generation X. So can we start there? Yes. So Gen X, we have seen the evolution of technology and financial services. We've, yes. we've seen it. I started out with a bank, a, check, a checkbook, right? Yes. So we're, we're like the generation that's started out with a checkbook and now we're banking on our phones. Yes. We've moved through this evolution of finance and technology at a massive pace. And so just being in society and being aware of what's happening has gotten me interested. But I've come to this from a finance background. Mm-hmm. So I started out as a corporate lawyer, I did a lot of deals um, across the globe, and technology is the it was the, is the amplifier yes. for so many ways that we get things done in the world, in business, in life, in our in our personal lives as well as our our business lives. And so, I would say that just having one just a focus area, being mm-hmm. a Wall Street lawyer and having financial services clients, and then moving into management consulting and having you know uh, software clients, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service clients, mm-hmm. and then moving into the Milken Institute, where this. This is a great place to take all of that kind of understanding of the evolution of finance, the policy work that should happen around it to make sure that the environment is set up so that it's safe, but also a place where innovators can innovate and economies can grow. And also just the conversations and amplifying the message around what financial services can be for more people. And I think that's part of my journey, but I would say that at the core I come from a family of entrepreneurs, and my entrepreneur family has always focused on empowerment. Mm -hmm. They've always focused on including people into opportunities. And so my family's, their businesses were education. And I think that financial inclusion is about financial education. It's about everything that we become is because someone gave us a tool or gave us a learning or a teaching or an inspiration for us to go out and take that and build on top of that. So it starts with education. It starts with inclusion and being at the table. And then let that be the basis for someone going out and and recognizing and achieving their fullest potential. I like that. I like how you started with, we all had checkbooks. (laughs) Well, not everybody. These young kids didn't, but you you and I did. (laughs) Yeah, I had a checkbook as well. But I like how you went over the evolution of that because I think from the inclusion part... Because it's all gotten digitized, I think we do have a slight advantage over some of the kids now today because we did have kind of the original paper and pencil, then we had spreadsheet, then we had budget software. Now it's all digitized, right? They may never get a statement or have to deal with that at some level. It's funny you say that. So it's like they say you have to crawl before you walk. Because crawling, you touching your hands on the ground Mm -hmm. wires your brain. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what it means when, in in this context, this generation is walking without crawling. They've jumped right into walking and running. And so in terms of education, what do they need to know from the crawl perspective so that they can go out and use the technology to the best of its potential? And I think that's important. So how do you think your area of financial inclusion will impact venture capital or private capital markets, or will it be an enhancement or an addition to venture capital? So it's interesting you say this. I'm thinking about AI in particular. I want to just emphasize that the power of AI and the power of what it means in terms of looking at the ideas and the financial technology that's been developed, what happens when you add Gen Gen AI and AI to that? I think from the venture capital perspective, and venture capitalists are out here looking for the next unicorn. They're looking for the next scalable mass product and service that's going to serve 
millions Means and millions, millions of people, people Glo- globally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And is AI going to be the game changer? And I think that analysis, that investment, I, that investment analysis is going to be key for the venture capitalist. Yes. And I think just the energy around tech investing mm-hmm. has been amplified because of AI. So I'll give my two cents on that. AI is one of the most powerful things in having done AI. I've been doing AI for a long time. I won't say how long, but very long time. So from the financial and venture perspective, even inside of your fund, if you are not utilizing AI at some levels, even to make yourself more efficient as a fund manager, I think you're going to be left behind as well because how like how you vet companies can be changed, how you look at deals can be changed and amplified, how you actually diligence deals can be changed and amplified, who you actually want to partner with can be changed and amplified because you have this these tool sets of AI to help you make more decisions and more kind of powerful decisions. I, I love that. Um, I love that you talk about from your vantage point sitting in the fund because mm-hmm. I've heard in terms of, like not overheard, but have been in meetings with companies that are building technology for funds yeah. and they're coining it asset tech. <laughs> asset tech, I don't know, fun tech, VC tech, tech I've v- heard that VC one, yes. tech. And, you know, as a fintech director, I look at what's the next tech that's coming out. It's insure tech, it's reg tech, it's soup tech. I'm like, here we go. It's VC tech. Let's but go. In the, in the end, all those things that we talked about, insure tech, fintech, you know, VC tech is all centered around data and information that you're actually utilizing in order to help make a decision. Yes. So insurance companies are using data in order to make decisions. The fact that you may have AI there or uh, dashboards or other things that actually visualize that for you doesn't erase the fact that technology helps empower you to make decisions in a faster and better way. I love that. We've been for the for many years we've been talking about how do we make our data smarter? How do we make how do we make it go. smarter? Here well, it is. it's smart, it's intelligent. We're, hopefully it's some people say it's intelligent, some people say it's hallucinating. That's the true. verdict is out on how people feel about it and how they're experiencing it, but I do love the fact that we're you've been in the you've been in it and I yes. like to amplify the voices here on at the Milken Institute on the platform of mm-hmm. people that have been in AI and they just didn't get here yesterday, right? We Correct. like to convene and make sure that our speakers and our experts have been in the business and have been at the in the trenches yes. of the work. And I think that's also something that's very unique about the Milken Institute. We make sure, to your point, that we have the best conversations around these innovative technologies, and we bring the technologists, we bring the pioneers, yes. and the thought and leaders the to the table. And the thought leader, yeah, you know, you, and the you, venture. You guys bring all the different stakeholders that are required to have these conversations. Yeah. Yes. All right. So I don't know if you have time for this, Nicole, but what are you reading or learning or listening to these days? Okay, I don't want to scare anybody because <laughs> I, so first of all, when Elon Musk, he spoke a yeah, couple he, days he ago and he talked about how what he like listens to at night before he goes to bed. Yes, he's a history. He listens to a lot of history and he like, so I felt connected. I said, oh my goodness, I have podcasts and I have books that I listen to before I go to bed. And the book that I'm reading now is called The Fourth Turning. Oh, yes, I know about the fourth turn. And so I don't want to feel like I'm some like... Oh, no, that's a, that's a very famous book. And it's okay. actually a very old book. The fourth turning is an old book. And it's about kind of the turn, like how generations turn. Every fourth generation yes. is there's a turn. Yes. yes, yes. And I just started reading it. And so a friend, Kelly Callahan from Arrington Capital, recommended it. I was on a session and she mentioned that we should be reading. And I said, okay. I downloaded it and I started listening to it. And I said, oh, my goodness. Yeah. I, I studied political science. I love history. I love learning the pattern of us Mm -hmm. um, and the the evolution of us as humans and that book has my attention so it's an old book as well so there's the fourth turning and then there's a fourth turning there's two versions of it there's another version I'm I'm on the old book I'm on the old book I'm just saying the the old book is real they did do an update but the old book is like the OG book yeah and so it's a very old book the fourth turning yeah yeah it's like 1984 they're coming in that same yes so I don't think something about me right it's like they, they think we're like in a crypto cult and like we are reading cult. these all these things, but think that it is good to read the framing of our evolution. And there's so much that we don't know, yes. but there is a lot that has been documented. And okay. so to that perspective, let's understand it. Let's use it to seek to understand ourselves and understand what issues existed and maybe patterns that 
we can learn or unlearn as we build out the future. So I'm excited about that book. I'm so happy that you. I, mean, I gonna, knew I'm, about it. I, I'm, first of all, I'm <laughs> well, going to. I'm going to. scientific. I'm going to call book. you and be like, let's talk <laughs> yeah, we'll about call this chapter. And talk about yes. the book. Yes. yes, we were here two years ago, Nicole. We're back. Let's give me your prediction. In two years, how do you see fintech and what you do here at Milken having changed and evolved? We are changing and evolving with the innovative technology that's there. So I'll give you an example. So when I first joined, I've been here almost three years, blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. That was the hot one. It it was the hot news, but we have still been analyzing it and making As sure that should. and it's it may be off of not off, off the radar for some, it, it but it's still on the, ra- the radar. It's on, it's on the radar for us. It stays Absolutely. on the radar, right? So that's in play. AI and finance. Yes. That's yes. in play. That's yes. on our radar. That'll stay on our radar. What's next? Maybe there's another technology. Maybe so there's the another one, convergence. The that, one that you should be looking at is quantum. Quantum computing? Because quantum has the cybersecurity implications, and it also has almost the implications of if some an AI goes on a quantum computer and it goes a little rogue, it'll be very difficult to stop that because yeah. of the way a quantum computer is constructed. Yeah. So looking at those elements of AI, quantum... And then the speed of everything, it'll just technology will just advance and it speed up beyond belief because of the speed of the quantum computer. So that's something else you guys may want to look at in combination with blockchains and the AI together. We look at that all in combination because it's like, are we going to have the quantum encryption properly? If we put our identities on these quantum computers, what does that mean from a financial perspective? Are you really you? We look at many things like that from a technological side. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that quantum connection. We've been looking at the convergence of AI and blockchain. The first, that first convergence and this quantum convergence. We have some supporters. World Quant is one of them. Yes, and, they, yes. and we're very much in our network. And we know as a program director, I know what they're doing. But to your point, how do you converge all of this? And what's for us, we look at the implications and the impact. Yes. And we look at the policy piece around it. Well, and that's something to wrap that's, our heads around. That's actually very important because. Because depending on what gets implemented in law, and Elon had mentioned this, it stays forever. It doesn't go away. They don't sunset things like they used to. So whatever gets implemented in law could be here for the next 500 years as far as we know. Yeah. So we have to be careful about how we're going to start thinking about this and the human impact in 500 years, not just next year. Or next year, 500 years, this is going to have an impact. And we should care about that. That's we why we're here. Should care about we're that. here shaping the future. It's not about shaping the next minute. It's shaping for the future generation. We have to Correct. leave this planet better than we have. Correct. And then the, the ne- and the next one, and the next one. And the, you're and the next the fourth one. turning, right? Well, it's my, like, the at least fourth that's turning. like a hundred, oh, we're that's like a hundred the- year horizon, right? In essence, we at least want to leave it for that. We sure do. We sure do. Nicole, how do people contact you? I'm reachable. I yes, am, yes I, you are very reachable. I'm a, I'm a, I live on LinkedIn. Yes. LinkedIn is my place. And then email in valentine at milkinstitute.org. I'm reachable. And we'll leave that in F- the show notes. Yeah, feel, yeah great. Great. Yeah, Reach man. out. And I also have a, a FinTech and Focus newsletter okay. where twice a month we send out information relevant to the industry impact. I, I highlight great entrepreneurs and great ideas, talk about policy that's happening. So highlight a lot of that in the newsletter. And so happy to, if you subscribe, you get to see what's happening play by play. I chronicle everything that we do with the program in the newsletter. So that's also a great way to just connect and understand some of the work that we're focused on. That's wonderful. So thank you so very much, Nicole Valentine. Thank you. This was 